In the previous video, we handled different GET requests with the help of DTO object. So, to complete this story with all the basic requests, in this video we are going to show you how to handle the POST, PUT and DELETE requests. As we said, this is a continuation of the previous video, so we are going to use the project from that video as a starter project for this one. If you want to read about this topic and download the source code, you can visit our article on the CodeMe site. Also, don't forget to watch the previous video because it will make it much easier following this one. All the links will be in the description below. So, let's get right into it. Firstly, let's modify the decoration attribute for the get owner by ID action in the owner controller by adding the name property to it. With this modification, we are setting the name for the action. This name will come in handy in the action method for creating a new owner. Before we continue, we should create another DTO class. As we said in the previous part, we use the model class just to fetch the data from the database. But to return the result, we need a DTO. The same applies to the create action. So, let's create the owner for creation DTO class in the entities slash data transfer objects folder. We're going to start with the name property. Then let's add the required attribute with the name is required error message. Also, let's add the string length attribute, limiting the number of characters to 60 and adding the error message that name can be longer than 60 characters. Good, we have the date of birth property and the required attribute with the error message that this property is required. Lastly, let's add the address property with the required attribute and appropriate message and also with the string length attribute where we set the limit for the length and the appropriate error message. As you can see, we don't have the ID and accounts properties. We're gonna continue with the interface modification. All we need to do here is to add a new create owner method member with the owner parameter. After the interface modification, we are going to implement that interface inside the owner repository class. Let's create the create owner method with the owner parameter and just call the create method from the repository base class. Now, before we modify the owner controller, we have to create an additional mapping rule. As we already did it, let's call the create map method and place the source and the destination objects. Lastly, let's modify the controller. We use the HTTP POST decoration attribute, which restricts this action to the POST requests. Then let's create the create owner action with the owner parameter that comes from the client. We are not collecting it from the URI, but from the request body, thus the usage of the from body attribute. Also, the owner object is a complex type and because of that, we have to use from body. If we want to, we could explicitly mark the action to take this parameter from the URI by decorating it with the from URI attribute, though we don't recommend that at all due to the security reasons and complexity of the request. To continue, let's add a try catch block. And in the catch block, log the something went wrong error message and return the 500 status code as a response. Since the owner parameter comes from the client, it couldn't happen that client doesn't send the parameter at all. As a result, we have to validate it. And if it is null, we log the error message, 
stating the object is null and return the bad request with an additional message. After this check, we have to check for the model validity. If it's invalid, we again log the error message stating the object is invalid and return the bad request with the error message. Then let's create an owner entity variable and map from the DTO. After the mapping, we call the createOwner method to change the state of the owner entity and call the save method to save the entity to the database. Right after that, we map back the owner entity to the owner DTO and call the created at route method providing the name of the get by ID action, ID parameter and the created owner entity itself. Okay, now it's a good time to test this code by sending the POST request from Postman. Let's start the application and open Postman with the prepared POST request. After we click the send button, we can see the 201 created response and also a newly created entity. The created at route method will return a 201 status code, which stands for created, and populate the body of the response with the new owner object. But also, it will add the location attribute within the response header with the address to retrieve that owner. We can copy this address and create a new GET request. As soon as we click the send button, we are going to get a newly created owner object. Excellent. Let's continue with the PUT request to update the owner entity. First, we are going to add an additional DTO class. Then, let's copy all the properties from the previous DTO class and paste them here. Even though this class looks the same as the owner for creation DTO, they are not the same. First of all, they have a semantical difference. This one is for update action and the previous one is for creation. Additionally, the validation rules that apply for the creation DTO doesn't have to be the same for the update DTO. Therefore, it is always a good practice to separate those. One more thing. If you want to remove the code duplication from these two DTO classes, you can create an additional abstract class, extract properties to it, and then just force these classes to inherit from the abstract class. For the sake of simplicity, we won't do that now. After we are done with the update DTO class, we have to create a new map rule by calling the createMap method and providing the destination and the source objects. Then let's change the interface by creating a new update owner member with the owner parameter. Of course, we have to modify the owner repository class by implementing the missing method and calling the update method from the base class. Finally, let's alter the owner controller. We use the HTTP PUT attribute to mark this action for the PUT requests with the ID parameter to state that this action's route is API slash owner slash ID. Then we create our update owner action with the ID parameter and the owner parameter with the from body attribute. Now let's add the try catch block and implement the same actions in the catch part by logging an error message and returning the 500 status code. For the try block, we can copy these validations from the post action and paste them back here. As you can see, we are repeating some code here, the try catch block 
and the validation parts. If you want to avoid that, you can watch our video about global error handling to remove try-catch blocks from our actions. Also, you can watch the action filters video to learn how to reuse validation code from the actions. Both videos will be linked in the description below. After the validation part, we fetch the owner from the database by using the ID parameter. If it doesn't exist, we log an error message stating that entity does not exist in the database and return not found. Otherwise, we create a mapping action, call the update owner method from the repository class, and save the modifications to the database. Finally, we call the noContent method to return the 204 response. Now, let's start the application again. And this time create a put request in Postman. We have modified the street of the owner. After we click the send button, we can see the 204 status code. Of course, we can return back to the previous request press the send button and we can confirm that the address is changed. Well, excellent. We can move on to the delete request. For this request, we should just follow the same steps we used for the previous requests. That said, let's start with the interface modification. Here we have to add a new method member delete owner with the owner parameter. Then in the repository class, we have to implement the missing method and call the delete method from the repository base class. Finally, we have to modify the owner controller. First, we use the HTTP delete attribute to mark this action for the delete actions and provide an ID parameter. This means the route for this action is going to be API slash owner slash ID. Ok, let's create the required action with the ID parameter. And add a try catch block. We are going to repeat one more time the logic in the catch block. And as we said a bit earlier, you can always watch our video on global error handling to escape this type of code repetitions. In the try block, we fetch the owner entity from the database and if it doesn't exist we log an error message stating that the entity with the provided ID doesn't exist and return not found. Otherwise we call the delete owner method from the repository and save our changes. Finally we return 204 status code by calling the noContent method. The same as we did in the put action. So, that's it. Let's start our application and send the delete request from Postman. And there we go. We can see the result. Our entity is deleted from the database. As we can see, everything works as expected. And with it, we are going to finish today's video. We appreciate your support a lot, and if you didn't already, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Don't forget you can visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code, and you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.